Hello everyone, this is Rohit Manoharan from Networkers Home and welcome back to the Checkpoint Lab training. For this video, we'll be discussing about threat prevention. So talking about threat prevention, let's discuss it through an example. Okay, in a corporate environment, we usually apply access control policies, right? So let me write it down. Yeah. So in a corporate environment, we usually apply access control policies. In that access control policies, we have URL filtering, we have content filtering, we have HTTPS inspection and many more of that, right? Consider Bob in a corporate environment, right? Yeah, Bob in a corporate environment using a PC and trying to download a malicious file, okay? So HTTPS inspection basically will provide two communications so that our firewall can inspect that traffic. But consider uh, for going next level. So there is a policy package called threat prevention package, which includes antivirus, right? Antivirus. Next, it includes IPS. It includes threat emulation. Threat emulation uh, basically means uh, it will, uh, whenever inspection inspect a traffic or data, takes that traffic a data and checks for it. And if the data is okay, but it has some sort of malicious lines of code, but it's a little bit vulnerable. So our firewall decides it's to drop it. So that thing is done through threat emulation. So that's a little bit theory. Threat prevention is actually in short, it's actually an additional policy in which we get the features like antivirus, IPS, threat emulation, right? So let's uh, let's see the lab. Yeah. So we are in a uh, smart console, as you can see, we are in a smart console, and in by default checkpoint environment has a threat prevention policy. So I will show you. You have to go to threat policy, uh, right? Uh, at the left left tab, you have to click on security policy. When I click it. As you can see, I have so many policies, right? So there is access control policy right here and there is threat prevention policy and both are different, okay? So in my access control policy, there are some rules, okay? There are some uh, rules and I will make it left so just so that you can see, right? Yeah, my management PC and manager can communicate to SG1 and SG2, that's my default rule, right? Okay, and I have added a title which is zone, which is uh, which you can add anything. I actually had one zone based access policy that was that's why I added that section title. Okay, now we'll jump into threat prevention policy. As you can see, we have a default threat prevention policy right here. Okay, and it doesn't have a name, and you can name it by the way. So I will uh, double click on it and name it. It's threat prevention, right? And hit enter it will say okay i just added a one more a and it's okay it's just a name right okay great okay as you can see the protected scope is any which means any scope it will be checked and what all it will do as you can see if we hover over here we have some symbols these are blades of threat prevention and if i hover over the each and every symbol it shows what capability that thing comes with Okay, if I hover the first symbol, it shows me that it is IPS. And if I go for the second, it shows us it is anti-bot. Third one, it has, yeah, antivirus. Fourth one, it's threat emulation. And fifth one, it's threat extraction. And there are several things. And as you can see, there are three levels of profiles by default in the checkpoint environment. And this threat prevention policy is by default enabled in our firewall and you can change it. There are three levels. If you go for basic, there will be less anti-bot will be not be there. Uh, if you go for optimized, this is the blades that are going to be uh, performing. If you go for strict, it will have more, more features. Okay. More blades and all. So you can keep a track of it. You can log it. You can give a packet capture, everything you can go and you can install it on separate gateways too. Okay. So, if you want to create your own profile rather than basic or uh, if you just want antivirus and IPS, if you want like that, you can create your custom profile uh, by clicking on new or you can go under the threat tools. You have an option called where it is. Yeah, profiles. 
And if you go for profiles, there you can create, see, as you can see, there are three basic profiles, which is basic, optimized, and strict, right? So these are the categories. And as you can see, it is inactive. And basic one is inactive. It's not in use. Optimized, these are the blade. Basic actually does only has our IPS, I guess. Yeah, IPS. Only basic has only IPS. And if you want to create a new policy, custom policy, you have to click on this small icon. And you can create your own policy. You can select what all features do you want. You can select what are the fields that you want. In IPS also, you have some categories. You can select which kind of uh, activation, pre antibody everything has field. So whatever you want, you can create your custom policy and apply on it, right? So this kind of prevention, this kind of antivirus, antibot, threat emulation, IPS, these all policy comes under our threat prevention. So basically, you can edit it out. This is how you add. You have to go to security policy. You have to go to threat prevention and click on policy. There will be a de there will be a default policy. You can add your own policy right here, right? So you to add your own policy, you have to click on this, or you can come here and right click and add a new rule above, which will uh, which will fill it with default ones. It's optimized. You can change it to strict basically. So I will go for strict this time, right? And you can actually mention on protection site file blade everything you can put on it so basically you can do whatever you need what kind of threat prevention your corporate needs you have to perform like that so that's it for the video thank you for watching i'll be seeing you in the next video bye bye